Hi, let's talk about the nose, nasal cavities, mouth, and oral cavity. In this video, we'll discuss the external features of the nose, the internal features and the functions of the nose and nasal cavities, as well as the nasal conchi and their functions, as well as the structures that comprise the nasal septum. And finally, we'll discuss the oral cavity and its organization. So the external nose consists of nares or nostrils that are separated by the nasal columella. This is just a skin covered fleshy part that is an extension of the nasal septum that would divide the left from the right nasal cavity. You can palpate your own and feel that there is nothing uh, within it that is of the septum. Surrounding the nares are the ala or the wings of the nose and we can see that the nose here is a part of the respiratory pathway it is exclusively a respiratory organ it is not involved in the aerodigestive pathway which would be the mouth and pharynx although the nose and nasal cavities do communicate with the nasopharynx as we'll see so there are two nasal cavities, a left and a right, and they are separated by the nasal septum. And we'll get to that in just a moment. So here is the nose as we saw. Uh, here is the nares. We cannot see the columella because it has been cut away, as has the nasal septum on this side. And we're looking at the lateral wall of the nasal cavity here. So this is nasal cavity. Here is the nasal vestibule. That would be the space that's surrounded by the external nose. The nasal vestibule is the anterior portion of the nasal cavity. As we move from the nasal vestibule inside the cranium, we're still within the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity has medial and lateral walls. The medial wall is quite smooth. It's just the nasal septum invested with mucosa. The lateral wall is very complex and it consists of three conchi. These conchi or turbinates are of various bones. So for instance, the superior and middle conchi are of the ethmoid. So they're oftentimes referred to as ethmoturbinates. The inferior concha are of the, are of their own bone. Uh, so they are their own separate centers of ossification. The nasal septum consists of three elements, which we can see here. So there's the septum. Anteriorly, we have the septal cartilage. Posterior inferiorly, we have the vomer. Vomer is meaning plow share, because it's shaped like a plow. And then the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. As we move to the posterior portion of the nasal cavity, there is a space called the koana, plural koani, because there are two of them, one for each nasal cavity, that is a communication between the nasal cavity and a part of the pharynx called the naso, that's well named, pharynx. So that's the superior most portion of the pharynx that goes from the koana down to a plane extending through the soft palate. So all of this space here is the nasopharynx. So the nasal cavity is invested by nasal mucosa and as an individual breathes in the air that they breathe in through their nose is both uh, warmed and humidified so as to not be a shock to the lungs and any impurities in the air can get captured by that nasal mucosa to prevent them from going down into the lungs so if you've ever spent a a, a day in a dusty environment or in a very you know developed city you might, at the end of that time, uh, 
blow your nose and that nasal mucus may be very dirty from all of those air impurities. Now, if we look at that lateral wall in greater detail, we'll see that associated with every concha is a meatus. So there's the superior, there is the middle concha, and then there's the inferior concha. And underneath these spaces are the meatus. So there's the superior nasal meatus, there's the middle nasal meatus, and there's the inferior nasal meatus. And then above the superior concha is a region called the sphenoethmoidal recess. Now within these meatuses are communications with paranasal sinuses. So for instance, the sphenoethmoidal recess contains the ostium or the opening to the sphenoid sinus. Uh, this superior meatus here can communicate with some of the ethmoid cells of the ethmoid sinus. The middle nasal meatus can communicate with the frontal sinus through the ethmoidal infundibulum, as well as the maxillary sinus, as well as some of the ethmoidal sinuses. So there's a lot going on in that middle nasal meatus. And then the inferior nasal meatus receives the nasolacrimal duct from the medial canthus of the eye. So we have a lot of communications moving mucus and lacrimal fluid between other regions and the nasal cavities. The mouth or the oral fissure sits between two labia and superior and an inferior. And this one is wide open, so it's maximally patent so as to reveal the oral cavity. The oral cavity can be uh, further subdivided into the oral vestibule and the oral cavity proper. So if we look at the dental arcades, so there are the teeth, those are the maxillary teeth and the mandibular teeth. The space external to the dental arcade, but internal to the lips and cheeks that is the oral vestibule. So the teeth and the supporting gingiva or gums helps to divide that oral vestibule from the oral cavity proper. Within the oral cavity proper, there is the tongue. And we can see here is the mucosa of the floor of the mouth, which is continuous with the tongue. And below that mucosa is the sublingual space which is still of the oral cavity proper. That sublingual space goes down to a set of muscles called the mylohyoid muscles. So that would be the floor of the oral cavity proper and the floor of the sublingual space. Now, posteriorly, we can divide the oral cavity from the oropharynx by a set of folds called the palatoglossal folds. And we'll discuss this in greater detail when we discuss the pharynx. This is the beginning of a region called the fauces, which is the anterior most part of the oropharynx. Suffice it to say, the barrier between the oral cavity and the oropharynx are these palatoglossal folds, which are oral mucosa surrounding the palatoglossal muscles. And that leads us to the assessment question for this video, and that is, which bone has features including two sets of conchi and a large portion of the nasal septum? Is it the ethmoid, the maxilla, the palatine, the sphenoid, or the vomer? Well, the three parts of the nasal septum are the septal cartilage, the vomer, and the ethmoid. So we can eliminate the other three of these. And then when we think of the two sets of conchi, the superior and middle conchi are known as the ethmo turbinates. So the correct answer to this question is A, ethmoid. Thank you very much for your time.